Good morning, family. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the opportunity that I have to share a few thoughts with you this morning from the Word of God. I'm going to be speaking from a very familiar piece of scripture. Uh, it is First Samuel 17. Uh, it is the story of David being confronted uh, with the Goliath situation. Actually, the entire uh, nation being confronted uh, by this big enemy that they fear and that they are so conscious of, whose presence they are so conscious of. Um, but I want to I wanna talk this morning about uh, how sometimes we have things that we need to face. You're definitely going to be facing a few things this year, um, as is the case with every other year. Throughout our lifetimes, we all have a giant of two to face. We all have something that uh, kind of offers resistance to where we are going and where uh, maybe God is taking us to. So it's not a matter of if we are going to see a, a little bit of resistance, if we are going to experience a giant or two. It is just a matter of how we are going to respond to these moments, how we are going to respond to these struggles, how we are what is our reaction, even in faith, going to be uh, when these things come our way? And so our main character, um, the future King David, finds himself in a situation where he is confronted by a an enemy that wasn't necessarily his, a, a situation that would affect him eventually, but uh, it wasn't his fight to fight. And... Maybe that's the first thing we need to consider, is that a lot of the things that we are going to face for what is next for us um, is not going to necessarily be things that we can anticipate. It's not going to be things that's um, going to be something that we are very much aware of, but it might just come as a little bit of a surprise. It might just come with a little bit of a curveball. But even in situations like that, God didn't leave us without a way out without a, a, a save that we can implement uh, regardless of whether this, we expected the situation or not. The second thing that we need to consider is the fact that regardless of where we are going now, God has already proven himself faithful. He has already proven himself strong enough to save us because of what he has done for us in previous situations. So when David uh, came before Goliath, he didn't come to Goliath as somebody that was completely unsure of how the situation would turn out. But his previous encounters with the Lord, when God saved him from the lion, when God saved him from the bear, when, when God gave him the strength to overcome uh, previous situations, that became kind of the, the platform that he addressed Goliath from. And so regardless of where we find ourselves this year, we should maybe uh, take note of how God has already saved us, how God has already helped us in situations that seemed impossible at the time. But the goodness and the faithfulness of a loving father uh, has always proven himself to be so consistent uh, you know, when we were facing previous situations. So that's the second thing we need to consider. The third thing we need to consider is that the weapons that we use as people of faith is not uh, the same solutions that the world will come up with. So what might work for somebody who doesn't know the Lord won't necessarily work for us because our challenge is uh, probably firstly a, a test uh, uh, on the faith that we have in God. And so the Bible says that King Saul uh, wanted to g give David his armor to wear to the fight. And, th and then he goes on to explain that it was a really good armor. It was, you know, a bronze helmet and, and all the things that was protected and covered in all the right spaces. But then when he tried to walk in it, it was impossible for him to do so. And so the Bible says that he took it off and he told the king, I can't use this because I haven't tested it. And so I understand that we're living in the age of innovation and of new things and uh, technological advancement and all of that. And we try to constantly find new ways to 
to address certain situations. But the, the, the reality for us as believers is that there is still power in the name of Jesus. There is still power in the blood of Jesus. There is still power in the promises that he gave us. And that, that will never lose uh, its ability to help and to deliver. The Bible says in the book of Zephaniah, uh, Zephaniah 3.17, The Lord your God is in your midst, and he is mighty to save, and he is mighty to deliver. And if we find ourselves in situations where um, we are offered new ways of dealing with stress and new ways of, of getting over a hardship and all of that, we need to understand that the same power that was in the blood of Jesus when we came to the faith is the same power that we can still apply today. We don't need a new armor. We just need the same testimony that has worked for us every single time. We can apply it today and it will still work. The Bible says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He will still be the same. And so we don't need any other motivation. We don't need any other kind of help. We just need Jesus. We just need to plead the blood of Jesus. We just need to pray in the name of Jesus. And we just need to ask God for the guidance of His Holy Spirit in, in whatever situation we might face. And the last takeaway from this passage uh, of scripture is maybe something that happened a little earlier and something that happened to the end of it. So when David first arrived on the, the battlefield and he first heard the threats of Goliath and, and all of that and he, you, he saw the fear in, in the eyes of the men of war, uh, the people that were supposed to be protecting them, the Bible says that David responded the following way. He asked, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? No, if you understand the, the concept of circumcision, it is, it is basically us um, doing away with our flesh and, and going into covenant with God to say that whatever God says, that is what we believe, regardless of what it is that we may face. And so his first observation was that this guy doesn't speak like a submitted person to the Lord. And so because he is not a submitted person, he is defeatable. If your situation is coming your way to kill you, if your situation is coming your way to harm you, the Bible says that no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper, and no tongue that is raised against us shall stand. That is what we believe as submitted people. That is the submitted truth that we live under. And so if anything comes our way and threatens us and doesn't sound like it's submitted to the will of God for us, the, the will of God that wants to see us prosper, that wants to give us a hope in the future, then that situation is immediately defeatable. It can be understood that I can overcome this because this doesn't sound like the will of God for my life. And so that is the first thing that David observed. So when it was time for him to go into battle against Goliath and he already took his five stones uh, from the brook, he made this declaration. He said that you come to me with a sword, a spear and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. And so going into 2024, family, that is all the testimony we need. That is all we need to overcome whatever we may face this year, whatever we may encounter this year. The name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the things that has been working for us in the past will still work for us in the future. As a man of faith, I speak that over your life. I declare it over your family. I declare it over your business, over your job. I declare it wherever you might find yourself that you will be blessed in the city, that you will be blessed in the field according to the Bible, you, that you will be blessed in your coming in, that you will be blessed in your going out. In Jesus' name, be blessed, family.